Thanks to Zyro for sponsoring this video. Hey friend, welcome back to my channel. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the worst advice I have ever gotten as a software developer. Uh, this includes advice, comments from when I was in college, when I was trying to get into industry. So now this isn't like bad advice, but it's just advice that wouldn't have worked for me. So I just figured I'd share that today. If you are new here, my name is Menda Ndur. I'm a software developer in Los Angeles, California. I'm also the current reigning Miss Washington, US. Yay! If that sounds like I have my life together, I absolutely do not. So this channel is all about getting my life together and helping you along the way. If that interests you, keep watching. Girl, how do y'all deal with me? Number one, you won't have a life outside of work. Now, this was something I truly believed when I was going into industry. I truly thought, wow, like I must be working 60 hours a day. I won't have anything else to do. I won't have any other time. But once I got into industry and once I talked to other people, that definitely turned out not to be the case. Now, granted, it does depend on what company you work for, but some people just want to get their stuff done and enjoy life outside of work, which I think is definitely the healthiest way to go about it with anything, not just work, but anything in general. So you definitely want to be multifaceted. You want to pick up some hobbies. You want to take maybe a fun class that you've always wanted to take because you are actually going to have more time that you think that you are. There's going to be space in your brain because you're not going to be thinking about, okay, what assignment is due? What homework do I have to study for? You're just going to need to focus on your job and then that's it. Second thing, ooh, this one is important, friend. You need to learn as many languages as you can. <laughs> not true. Absolutely not true. That gave me such unnecessary stress when I was looking for a job or before I, before I graduated because I thought that, okay, I need to learn all these languages. I need to pad my resume. I need to look as impressive as possible. By the time I graduated, I was like proficient about seven languages. Girl, what am, uh, how many languages am I using now? Like all you need to learn, all you need to know the languages that you need for work and the ones that you want to know. <laughs> I'm only using three of those languages and two of them are mandatory. So you absolutely do not need to know a lot of languages to get a job. So don't feel pressure to learn every single language on earth. Another piece of advice that I got was don't apply for jobs with languages that you don't know. Now, I don't think that's a good advice just because I have found that as long as you know one language really, really well, companies are willing to give you a chance because I mean, think about it. There are, there are companies that have their own languages, that have created their own languages and expect you to learn it. So you definitely don't need to limit yourself to only the jobs that are using the language or languages that you are very familiar with because every job, at least from what I've heard, gives you a grace period on picking up their infrastructure, picking up how they do things, and even learning their language. So, ah, I keep getting lipstick on my teeth. So if there's a job that you are really interested in and they don't use the language that you are very comfortable with, just be honest with them and just give it a try because you never know. Everyone knows that most languages are pretty similar to each other. Like they all have the basic things. They all have data structures. They all have, you know, things that they all use. So once you know one language, it's the learning curve is state. Okay. When it comes to learning your first language, but after that, it's way easier. And companies know that. Another piece of advice that I got was that you're working alone. So it's a great job for introverts. No, not true. I was literally taken aback by how much interaction you do have to do. I thought, okay, with the job that I was already in in college, Metalab, because like I've mentioned, I was a student backend developer when I was in college at a school funded startup. We were all friends. So I didn't think that that type of 
environment, work environment, would be in industry. I thought we're just not all going to be in cubicles, we're all going to be, you know, amongst ourselves and cool and quiet, which I, I was fine with because I've mentioned I am an introvert in, in the not fun way. So when I got my job, I was surprised to find out that, you know, we all take walks twice a day together. Uh, we eat our lunches together. If you want to, you don't have to. But we all have like a group chat that we all just like talk and like, you know, make jokes in. And um, as for mandatory things, especially if you're using like the Agile Scrum methodology, it depends on your company, you know, some people hopefully are not using waterfall. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. But if you're using Agile Scrum, then you have your daily stand-up meetings, you have your weekly Scrum meetings, you have your retrospective meetings. So, sorry, introverts. But now that we're all remote, I mean, there's no like face-to-face -face interaction anymore, but you still do have to interact online, so. Here's some advice that I am probably going to be one of the only people to tell you on YouTube, which I've heard that I am one of the only like <laughs> software developers on here who like stresses this. Everyone else is saying the opposite, but friend, it does not get easier once you graduate. They used to always tell me, professors and like teachers and mentors would always say that it gets better once you graduate. Better for who? Look, this job is still hard. It don't matter. It doesn't matter if you are fresh into the industry or you are a 20 year vet. There are going to be some days where you are going insane trying to figure out what is going on with your code and it turns out that you added an extra semicolon. You know, like, I'm always the person who's like, I love debugging, but once I actually get to the debugging part, I'm like, Whoa, who, who am, am I? I? What is going what on here? Me and my compiler have a love-hate relationship. But my point is that I, I wish someone told me to not go into industry with the expectation of, okay, boop, it's all gonna be fun and roses now. It's not, it's not, that's not true. It's not gonna be fun and roses. It's not gonna be as hard because now you already you know, know the fundamentals, but this is a job where you're always learning, always. You're always going to be learning something new, finding a new way to do something, finding a new algorithm, like, you're always gonna be learning. So do not feel dumb or inferior because you are having hard days, because I promise you, every software developer every software developer, I don't care what you say, has those days. So keep at it. You can do it. I promise you. The last advice that I'm going to mention today is that you should wait until you graduate to start applying for jobs because you'll have more time to do more projects and basically pad up your resume. Lies. Lies! The goal is to get a job right out of school, whether it is a boot camp, self-teaching, university, it doesn't matter. Like, the goal is to get a job right out of it, if you want to. When you're in learning mode, like when you're a student, people pity you more <laughs> because they know that you're just like a little baby, a little baby that just needs, you know, help, just a little bit of nurturing and nudging to get into the right direction. So people are a lot more willing to help you so please like take advantage of that I'm, i mean student in the sense of you are in the process of learning so whether you are a college student a boot camp student self-teaching you are in learning mode and people are more willing to help you i'm glad i did not listen to that because i probably would not be at the job i am today so take advantage of every opportunity that you have speaking of taking every opportunity that you possibly can one piece of advice i can definitely give you is to have your resume online now first of all actually two things here you need a github account which i mentioned in my video where i created a roadmap i'll link that in the cards somewhere but you need to have your own GitHub, and I do recommend having an online resume. That way it's cleaner, prettier, and 
faster to distribute to different people. A friend of mine actually had a card where there was a QR code to her website that would show her resume and her projects and that was very impressive. That is where Zyro comes into play. They're probably the easiest way to build your own personal professional website, really for any occasion. And you don't actually need to be a programmer <laughs> to use the website because it's just drag and drop features so that you can make a nice and pretty website for your future job. So I also checked the pricing. It is the most affordable option on the market right now, which I'm glad because I know you guys are learning and you guys are students. So I do want to recommend things that I know will help. I've mentioned that before when it comes to me selecting sponsorships, it has to be things that I know will help you and my nephew who is a computer science student right now. So if you use my link and my code, you can get 30% off all of their plans, which I think is pretty good. If you guys do use it, please send me your website so that I can put them on YouTube and get them out there. Uh, please send me resumes, guys, please. Like, <laughs> I wanna put them out there for you. Again, use my link and code to get the 30% off the plans. Let me know how you like it. And with that friend, uh, ow. It's getting really dark here. I am going to go finish watching Naruto Shippuden and I'll see you in the next video, friend. Stay safe, stay healthy, wear your mask, and please, please, please take care of your mental health, okay? Bye.